And hello there, everybody, and welcome. Happy Friday uh, here on Adobe Live, where you'll find us every weekday between 12 and 1. Now, just a quick note for you. If you're watching on YouTube, that's fine. You can absolutely do that. But if you want to get involved and chat along with the community, where you should go is to behance.net slash Adobe Live and also Beyond the stream, we have our very own Discord to continue uh, that conversation. So I'll say hello to a few of you in a minute. But first of all, let me introduce today's fabulous guest, who is Garab Takali. Garab, how are you doing? Hi, everyone. Hi, Tony. You all right? Um, I'm yeah. very well, thank you. Good. Um, glad to hear it. How's it where you are at the minute? It's getting very warm here at the moment. Is it warm for you as well? Yeah, it's, it's blazing outside at the moment. Mm. And I think it's going to get even hotter. <laughs> so, well, the good news is we're kicking off everybody's weekend, really, with yeah. the, the sunshine and your work. So it's going to be fantastic. So, yeah. looking forward to chatting to you in just a minute. First of all, though, let's say hello to some of the people we have in the chat. And uh, Garob, actually, we have so many people that come here every weekday uh, to watch yeah. this. We've got a really lovely community. Uh, so we've got Andreas in the chat. Hello, Andreas. Guten Tag. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, we've got Kirsty. We've got Gareth. We've got Sanjana. We've got Caroline. We've got Sean. There we go. Sean and uh, Andreas also watch the German stream, which goes out before this one, the hour before this one. Nice. Uh, we've got Robert. Hi, Robert. We've got Tim, as always, in the background, making sure that everything runs uh, smoothly. All power to the Tim. Uh, we've got Angus is here as well. We've got James. We've got Bob Demers, who actually sets, and, and I kid you not, a 3.45 a.m. alarm. <laughs> He's in Arizona. He's wow. in Tucson, Arizona. And he wants to watch this live, not on the replay. So he gets up and just watches the long live. So, hey, Bob. Uh, we've got Jackie here as well. And many, many more. Of course, I can't say hello to everybody. We'd be here literally all day. Garab, <laughs> so, why don't you uh, tell everybody in the chat uh, and watching right now who you are and uh, what you do? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Garab Fakali, and I'm an illustrator currently based in London, UK. And I've been working as a prof like professionally for the last five, six years, and I mean, I don't know if you people, are, like anyone's familiar with my work, but I draw a lot of people, sceneries, like musicians, and work with various clients such as like newspapers, um, clothing companies, musician, uh, musicians again, record labels, uh, anything that sort of I f find like interesting enough for me like or there's something that i can provide to the client uh yeah and yeah that's what i do really you've worked on some really really big brands in fact you've worked for one of my favorites converse uh, i actually i actually buy white converse and paint them myself i enjoy doing that so it's <laughs> super that you've worked for them directly but you have you've worked for the new yorker the New York Times, The Guardian, Bloomberg Business Week, Decca Records, NBC, Red Bull Music. There's a huge list uh, of the places where uh, your work uh, has gone. So really fantastic. And what are you going to be showing us today, uh, Grab? What, uh, what are we um, going to be seeing? So today, the first image I'm going to talk through is, is quite um, relatable to today's weather it's uh, a beer company camden town brewery yeah which uh the project 
the beer label I'm going to talk about is called the Strawberry Hell's Lager, which okay. is like a fruity beer that they release every summer time. And I'll just talk through how, like, we how something like this project like starts off from okay. the start to finish. And cool. so at the beginning, I guess as you're aware, like we there's a brief sent out by the client. So this time is Camden Town Brewery, and so they were, we have like an outline of what they would like and the kind of imagery that they're sort of interested in like showing in the can and for this one they were quite interested in like showing the sort of like the late 60s like early 70s like hippie culture and like the yeah there's just a lot of um imagery based around that and like the music obviously because i've sort of worked with a lot of, I've worked with a lot of musicians and also done a lot of music related artworks so they wanted to incorporate that into the artwork and also last but not the least the strawberries which is quite important I guess it's like the flavor of the beer right so yeah, that was that was like an important part as well and also they always have um uh, like a restrictive color palettes that they use so I guess to make keep it consistent like throughout the whole year and like every year and so this time the colors uh, that I could use were like the light pink blue and obviously the red and like and an accent color that could like that I could use for shadows and stuff so first of all I suppose everything is just starts with a lot of picture research like as you can see yeah. here it's a lot of um, looking around for images that I could uh, use. Yeah. Or some of these could have been taken yesterday, though, couldn't they? You wouldn't know, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, it's just the, amazing. Yeah, the trend kind of comes back every time, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess like it's just picking out things that I could work with and incorporate in like the imagery mm. and. So then on, like, I'll just start like a bunch of sketches and this was the one they like were happy with. So there will be like a couple of sketches that I normally pitch to the client and they will, um, I guess they will pick something and then we'll go through it and then might need some changes. So we'll change some things on it as well. But this is sort of like pretty much like it was, it was they were happy with the piece, which is good. <laughs> And from here on, I sort of start working out the sketch. And also, they always they already send like a template, which okay. I have to work towards. And I generally prefer sort of looking like having everything there, like all the bits, the elements that are like as you can see, like the logo yeah. and like the label, the content that is on the side. And I prefer having everything there so I know what it's going to look like when I draw on it. Yeah, because they and have to relate, right? There's, there has to be some connection. Yeah, ex definitely. I mean, yeah. obviously, like, you kind of have to... So this is it bang in the middle. You want to, you know, like, the composition needs to be, like, pointing towards, like, the middle of the beer because it's, like, that's the most important part, I guess. Yeah. In a way, because... And also, just, like how the can's going to look from the front and uh, just there's various things that will come into play when I start sketching and yeah well this is like a actually the roughest sketch that I did for the label uh, as you can see it's like quite <laughs> sketchy in pencil and then after this I still lovely though it's got <laughs> a lovely thanks. quality to I like sketch work I love it thanks and then from there on it is I suppose we move on to like doing the outline in a line work where it's like a lot more cleaner and neater, which is what, how I normally work at the moment. And then as you can see here, so there's, um, yeah, the outline's here now. Yeah. And the process is generally 
I sort of start. Um, so, as you, as I told you earlier, that there's like a limited color palette, so I need to sort of work out which to use where and like how to make it all come out and like the. So there's like lighter color and darker colors that I need to work for with, and so one of the things that we do is like I'll just sort of get a paint bucket and then on a layer I'll just go I'll just do that first just a lighter okay. color and then from there on I can sort of see like because this color is quite light so I, I probably want to use it for the background mm -hmm. because it will it will just sort of like stay back and the darker colors that I use will be on the foreground like so like the the plants the strawberries the people on it so they all sort of you know like there's like some kind of uh, dimension to the image that yeah. like stands out and I kind of like start eliminating the bits where like so like here so I'll just get rid of the colors on the clothing yeah and like uh, everywhere that I need to get rid of so you do actually erase it rather than the masking it your your, your workflow is erasing yeah I yeah. do it, sometimes it, it kind of depends really like whereas because because this image is there's such a like uh, strict color guideline mm. so I didn't quite like know what I was doing yet when I okay. so I just sort of jumped into this process where I block the whole thing out and then try and figure it out from there okay and um, or sometimes if I was doing like a normal piece I would just uh, it would just be line work and then um, I would sort of pick a color and then just go straight over with a paint bucket or or like a brush if, if it's not too much um, yeah so I'll generally just get rid of all the bits here you can see okay let's see if um, I've got uh... so I'll just show you quickly like how so say the strawberries are gone now and I would pick well, this is like one of the colors that they would want the their like brand color, I guess, like red. Yeah. And I guess that would be so sort of important, like using it on it. And also, other thing I'd say is like I'd always, if I was using another color, I'd always like add another like new layer. Yeah. So I don't. I know that there's it's in a separate layer, so it doesn't mess around with anything. So like, this is, yeah, like a classic way of working for me. And so once that is, once I've figured out like the colors for each thing, like things that I forward, then I just go around like um, coloring all the objects in the same color or using the paint bucket. And then, yeah, like, I feel like yeah so as you can see this is like I've already worked on this so I'm just going to show you as you can see all the strawberries are all like in the red and and like added more colors to the plant so it stood out more like the darker blue tone yeah uh, as you can see And then, so do you work with tints as well? Do you, do you kind of? Not not necessarily. No. I, I normally w uh, work with like quite flat colors, mm. and yeah, generally it's always like quite blocky, bold colors that I prefer using. So this is yeah, the same sort of red. I think we ended up going with uh, this red actually, on all of the items. Right. 
And actually, yeah, and just because like there was such a limited amount of color palette, so I just had to really work quite. I don't know, just be really careful with how I, <laughs> yeah, where the where the color goes and how I you know, like string it all together. But this is just, yeah, this is like an example of how I normally work. But yeah, something like this. Um, Gareth is asking, do you work exclusively with Photoshop or do you use Illustrator as well? I think you do, don't you? I do use Illustrator when it comes to, when the artwork needs to be like very, like obviously like it can be enlarged. Yeah. So I think, Photoshop is my main tool to like mm -hmm. coloring and um, making, if I was making prints or anything, any kind of project, I would use Photoshop to color it and finish it. And then if that artwork needs to be like, like made into like a huge banner or something, then I would generally take it to Illustrator to get it vectorized. So, you know, like it doesn't matter how uh, large you make the artwork once you vectorize right. it, I guess. So yeah, yeah I cool. think that's that's the only uh, purpose for Illustrator, like for me. Mm. Yeah. And uh, how do you transfer the sketch in the first place? Uh, um, uh, let me see. Angus is asking. So do you trace it? Do you scan it in? So sketch, um, as you can see here, this is like the outline. So I would normally work on a paper. Yeah. Then I'll like uh, put a tracing paper over it and use a like a fine line or ink, you know, like a pen yeah. to draw like a more clear lines from the sketch. And then I would scan that in. And once that's, that's scanned, it like this is what well, this is what I'd, what it looked like. So this is generally what it would come to, and it would be. Oh, it would be in this uh, format. So yeah, it would just be black and white. Yeah. Like that. And I would, um, from here, I would probably move on with, like I said, how many colors there are that I can use yeah. and then just change. How do you, like, how do you store the colors? Do you like store them in a creative cloud library or do you just? I Generally, I, I just go on, like um let's go on my say my previous work that i've done right. so for example this uh artwork is something that i might have looked at just um i just sort of eye drop from my previous work really like i don't i don't okay. have a huge i mean i don't have like a, a proper color palette like bank that i use it's just i just look at what i've done before and then some artwork might fit with the new ones that I'm working on. Some okay. might not. So it's just, yeah, it's from all from previous sort of accounts. Okay. Cause that, that's the bit for me that I think of as the danger noodle there is, uh, is making sure that I'm using the same colors consistently throughout, you know, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, with colors, it's just, um, I suppose it's just finding the right balance and, trying to set the mood of the image whereas because this is like it's meant to be like summer thing like summer vibe going on in the image yeah and and people are getting that by the way they're totally getting that they they think you're channeling the beatles yeah uh, strawberry fields yeah yeah it's like like woodstock <laughs> yeah and, you know, like the hippies rolling around in the fields and i don't know but um yeah it it needed that sort of color, I guess. And f like in this project, they sort of decided the colors for me. So I didn't have to <laughs> pick anything, which is, which doesn't happen very often, but yeah, it was great. Yeah. And moving on, so like that's, that's how I would normally present the final um, colored artwork. And Especially for this project, it meant they needed like individual elements to be 
used on like different things. For example, uh, not this one. For example, for this, so as you can see, like, so there's a box as well they need, like they're gonna have to use the artwork for. Right. So I had to like, I had to sort of make sure that even though, as you can see, they're all like layered above each other, the people and like the plants and the strawberries, I had to make sure they were still in like individual elements. So I could take it to Illustrator and then um, like separate them and like vectorize them. So each element could be used in different ways like that, like here, and also like in like bigger advertising boards or like even their delivery trucks and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, that was one of the key things that I had to work as well, work on for this project. And yeah, I think. And it really I looks something when it's wrapped, doesn't it? Do you ever test the wrap out? Do you ever use anything like, um, you, you know, do you ever use uh, any software to kind of test wrap it uh, around a yeah. can? Yeah, sort of. I, I would probably like, um, I think I did do it. I had like an old can uh, designed from last year from the yeah. same uh, same beer. Mm. And I sort of um, kind of like plastered the artwork on top of it and like multiplied the image just to see what it would look like from right. the front. And I kind of printed out the test as well and like sort of wrapped it around a, like a can of that same similar size just to see what like, because it is like quite important for them that everything sort of, you know, I guess the composition's working. Yeah. And like pointing towards like the Camden Strawberry Hills uh, forever lager, like the text and the logo and stuff. So yeah, I'll I do. Let you in. Oh, go on, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I do have like, uh, I do try it out on like computer and like in physical object as well. Yeah, so actually, uh, James in the chat is asking, uh, doesn't Photoshop have the ability to wrap things around objects? And uh, James, yes, it does. Um, it does actually have a can wrap it. You'll find it in the 3D menu. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's under the mesh. You can do that. And of course, there is, as the chat is saying, uh, Adobe Dimension uh, will also do that too. Perfectly. There you go. Um, but no, just interesting. Although I don't think Adobe Dimension actually has uh, an alcohol container, which typically is a... A longer can but you could definitely get one mm. um, no fantastic great project and of course that, that's the thing i mean you're pointing out there nicely uh the flexibility that you've got to build into your work you know because it isn't just a can it's yeah. the box for the can it's the yeah. marketing materials for the can yeah. it's the full page press ad for the can yeah um, and all of that so no really great really great and people are are totally getting the uh the uh, 60s 70s vibe from it as yeah. well. so it's fantastic really good um i'm just seeing if there's any uh anything else in the chat here um i have no idea if it's 330 milliliters the uh, default can size uh, there gareth do they give you different variations do you get any variations garab for that anything or is it just the one um, straight can size no this is um this is like uh was a one this is because they've had this standard size for like last five, six, I don't know how long. Right. So this is like their standard, like seasonal beer can. Yeah. Which is like 330 mil. Like a right. Okay. Can so it is. Size. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it is. But then like I had a project where I worked on, it was for, it was for Camden as well, which is, I'll show, show you now. So this one, um, hmm. So this image was, uh, so this picture here. Yeah. So this yeah. was uh, for another Camden project that I worked on, which we initially started working on. <clears throat> I think it was like a can, as you can see, like the 330 mil. Yeah. But then um, <clears throat> it kind of, I did the artwork, but they sort of changed their mind on like how big the can was gonna be. And it changed into, a larger like sort of like a pint size can 
it's like 440 or 500 mil. That's it. I thought it was around about that region. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. well, it just, uh, <clears throat> I just had to kind of resize or like rework into the artwork. And um, it kind of ended up being a bit taller. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to open the file now. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of like turn. Yeah, I had to kind of change the dimension of the artwork a bit and like kind of bring it in a little bit and then like obviously um, add a little bit on the sides as well. Right, um, okay. And then the same goes with this as well. Like the, so that's the can for the, yeah, for that project. I remember seeing these, they're great. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite a good project for them, I guess. Mm. Helping out like the pubs in this difficult time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sandrine is asking, um, given that you have to account for different media sizes, uh, do you tend to build your uh, Photoshop project, your raster project, based on pixels, of course? Do you build it at super big dimensions so that you've got flexibility, so you're on the safe side? Um, I gen you know, I generally just work on like an A3 size or A4. Right. Because because I can like quickly take it into Illustrator and like vectorize it. Okay. And like that sort of eliminates that problem, which is okay. like I can just enlarge it however large I want. Okay. Yeah, that's how I would do that, I guess. Okay. Cool. Let's just see if there's anything else in the... Uh, uh, I think somebody's... I don't, oh, it's all right. I think that was about uh, something else, but I thought it was 12 packs of... Uh, Can's not sure there. Uh, and uh, James is saying that clients always change their minds, especially if you've, especially if you've already done it, which is true. That's just yeah. goes to the territory. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, kegs. Uh, keg would be a big, big can to, to wrap your art around. That would be really large. Oh, by the way, I like this on this particular project, the one you've got on screen at the moment. I love that there's sort of that user interface on the back for you know, pubs or pints and that little slidey thing. Very good. Very yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and Sandrine is saying, okay, so you ultimately uh, vectorize it. That makes sense. Mm. Uh, and uh, we are doing Friday beer talk. It does look that way. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Uh, yeah. So fantastic. Nice. No, grand. Thank you for showing us, uh, showing us that. Uh, so, uh, is that you've got another project to show us. Is it, are you going to move on to that? Is that where we're going? Yeah. Now, or? Yeah, I'll, um, I'll move on to that now. Okay. Uh, let's get it Just really look at that desktop. You're a little trash panda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh mind your mind looks like that by Friday, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I always try keeping things in place. But <laughs> I'd spend flow. Saturday morning doing it and just getting it ready. Yeah, it's, yeah, it seems to just flow out. Yeah. So this is another artwork that I'd like to talk about, which is it is I work. So when I work on this kind of image, it's slightly different just because um, uh, it's like because this project um, is going to be it was going to be printed onto a risograph printer printed by a risograph printer and as you might know, a rice graph printer works in a very similar way to like a screen print, which is in layers. So they print block colors in layer. So you can only print one color at a time. It's like, um, I guess like lithography or maybe even etching similar, but like wood block, I don't know. And yeah, yeah. Boom. all of those things. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. the tr sort of traditional printing techniques, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, so something like this, I would try and figure out like the color palettes that's available from the printers that I'm using. And generally, Rise of Our Printer comes with like tons of colors, and and then you can sort of overlay to create new colors. And it is it's just like a really fun way, fun kind of limiting way, but also kind of brings the best out of I think artwork. And using like less colors but like trying to make the most out of it 
And so it would be like, so as you can see, this is how I kind of colored the image, but, but I sort of tend to individually color everything like so i'll look at i know how many colors i have so for this one i've chosen like pink blue and yellow and black so that's like sort of like cmyk color and i will so like paint like color the background first i guess right it's, yeah it's like the most you know common way or easier i don't know just like makes sense to start from the background Ooh, there's a lot of layers here <laughs> is and blends uh blends between colors are a tricky thing to do right you've got to yeah definitely you've got to get those things just right yeah so i would say like start with a pink maybe and then <clears throat> so it's the same thing with the outline here as well as the last project i just wanted to clarify so i'll draw the line on sketch and then trace it with an ink and then scan it and then have it on the photoshop so i would have the backgrounds done first and I, as you can probably see like there's like a slightly airbrush kind of tool here so sometimes i just paint all over it and then I'll just show you an example on the other side here. Um, so I'll get a rubber tool. And then choose like a softer sort of airbrush style rubber. Yeah. And then have a noise on it as well. Because okay. it, just, it just makes the grain a little bit nicer, I think. Yeah. And then enlarge it to say like 100, I don't know how big that one is, but it's probably about that. So you can see I'll do, oh, it's the wrong layer. <laughs> so I'll just go over it like that. And so that's the kind of process that I use on this part of the image here, as you can see. Yeah. And so once this layer is like here, I'll kind of add more things like, but this is not the first thing here. And then I'll sort of apply more layers like blue and blue. That one's added layer actually. So I sometimes also do this where say the plant's blue here and then when everything's on it i try and like like you said like how you overlay and like multiply the colors yeah to get another color so as you can see with the plant here um it's yellow and then i'll add um, a bit of blue so you got green and then <clears throat> do the same with a lot of uh elements in the artwork but this is sort of generally how i work and then yeah when i get to a stage where i'm kind of happy with what how it's like looking so was this piece also uh, so was this this is dorothy asprey right yeah that's right she, so was this commissioned by her or was this for, commissioned for a piece about her or no this is uh my own personal project that i wanted to do okay it, it wasn't it was just uh, something that I wanted to make um, during the lockdown. And Dorothy Aspie, she was like um, a jazz, like harp player from yeah. like 60s, early, like late 50s until like 70s. And I think she passed away around 80s. But she was like... Um, oh, so it definitely wasn't. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I was unaware of, her, of of that, but there you go. Yeah. But she she was a like a pioneer of yeah. like her, say like her instrument and as like yeah. a woman being a band leader in that time where like it was heavy, like such a male dominant 
uh, scene, I guess, like the jazz music. And she like made some absolutely amazing albums. And this artwork is just like a tribute to her and like what she did, I guess. It's great. Uh, so the artwork's like, can I talk about the artwork again? Yeah. So again here, it's like, so I did the pink and then I add like yellow to like overlay. So there's a lot of overlay on this artwork, especially because I wanted to say like, for example, like bring out like a, an illusion where it's like, you know, there's like a light coming from the window. Yeah, so add some form. Yeah, it. like, and add a bit of like, um, sort of dimension to the image where mm -hmm. it kind of, you know, like something's forward, something's backwards. And for this bit, so I'll generally start with a flat color on the pot. And then, Where is it? Yeah, so I'll generally add like a flat base like that. Yeah. And then I would overlay it with um, um, overlay with a blue. So this is not blue right now. And then, um, like I said earlier, the airbrush tool then I would like get rid of the little bit of blue like that. So I can, you know, there's like an illusion of like light coming from outside and like a bit of a 3D, gives like a three dimensional qualities to the image. Yeah. And again, same with the black layer that's on the front as well, just to give even more like a darkness to the image, I guess. Yeah. So that's like one way that I sort of work and that's what's uh, really fun about it because you can really play around and then like mix colors and then like get rid of some of them. So you can, you know, like like the floor here, you can see like the shadow here. So it's just like working around that. Cool. I've got a technical question, which I don't know uh, if, if you can answer this or not, but um, how do you build if, how do these, uh, Oh, how do these overlay translate uh, overlays? So presuming you mean the layers, uh, Sandrine, translate in Resograph. How, how do you build your how do you build your channels? So with um, I normally uh, speak to my printer, and then yeah. he'll he'll sort of let me know. Um, I'll send him like the Photoshop version first, yeah, and then he'll sort of look at it, and then he'll kind of suggest like how. The percentage of like the opacity level per layer yeah because <clears throat> we do like a couple of test runs before we even like go on the f and do like a huge run of print right just to make sure everything's perfect on it and when i did this one so i kind of had like everything on 100 percent opacity i think and it didn't quite work no so, like the blue is actually a lot darker like even that blue that I used, it's a lot darker on the machine. Right. And for example, for when we printed it and it, it didn't work and the, that made the whole, this green area really dark on the harp as well, just because it was dark blue. And then we turned the opacity level down on, on the second run and then tested it and it sort of worked all right. So mm. as I'll just show you, like an example of all the layers. So the so there's four layers on this artwork. So there's yeah. one black. There's this one is um, blue. Yeah. As you can see, like the printer basically prints whatever's on this, like the opacity level yeah. with this, the color that's in the drum. And as you can see, these are like the blue here is like for. 100% opacity level, but whereas, as you can see on the window and the harp and Dorothy Asprey's dress and like the leaf is like toned down a bit. Yeah. It's like up to about 75%. So the 
the colors aren't it's just like toned down way more and say so, like pink i just decided to go 100 percent. it was fine it worked all right yeah and yellow i think i went with 100 percent as well okay so but yeah you, you can just see like the kind of how the layers would come together um try have you ever actually tried working with a multi-channel image have you ever done that it's it's, it's one of those things you don't meet too many people who do too often but have you ever tried yeah i mean multi-channel i had a look but the only thing i found with the multi-channel is i kind of like having like big blocks of flat colors yeah and with even with multi-channel it, at the end it would kind of look i don't know if it would quite work with how i do the images i think okay. Because there would be still because multi-channel, I suppose, is like it's kind of like printing like CMYK, right? Uh, well, that, that's one form of, of multi-channel, but there is another one where you can actually uh, specify spot colors and work with spot colors. So if you chose your palette, yeah, you would essentially create a channel for um, each one of those colors, and then you would paint on that particular channel. It's not quite the same as working in the um, as, as, as the workflow you, you have at the moment it's a little bit different but i just wondered if yeah. you've done it because it, it is quite rare because it is a little bit technical because yeah yeah and you know most people do what you're doing i think is really wise you're talking to your printer uh first yeah. which is the best advice i think you can give yeah. working with any printer on any project in any form of printing Definitely. Uh, so you're talking to them listening to what they're giving you back and working with them that is you know you're not going to go wrong no, uh, not at all. doing that. Yeah, not yeah. at all. We'll go trash panda on there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You wouldn't want to be that, no. No. <laughs> but um... well, that's the danger noodle, right? If you uh, if you kind of go down that route, otherwise, so yeah. But then, um, yeah. For example, I mean, I where well, once the colours are like all done. And I sort of like tie them all together, like in one layer. Yeah. As you can see here, and then this is yellow, and then like blue, and then pink, and then so these are like the like the file that I would send to the printers. Mm. And then, but well, actually, it's more like <laughs> these ones. That it has to be in like grayscale, by the way. Yeah. File you have to send. And yeah, this is this is how it all comes about, right? So I just like connect all the yellow layers together and then the blue layers together and the pink together. And yeah, just... Well, that's when you really have to think about your print order as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If definitely. You've done, if you've done that, you know, if, it, if you're working between independent layers mm. uh, for your colorization, that's when you really have to think about, you know, Oh, I did that highlight around the edge. I, so I did, I revealed effectively some of the pink through yeah. the blue layer rather than painting it on top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, once you've got that stacking order, uh, right. Is it Because it's one of those things. I have met people before who've changed, who've swapped channels around, mm -hmm. uh, thinking that, yeah, that's an interesting effect and then not realising that it has a disastrous... Yeah, uh, yeah, If the printer's not expecting it, it has disastrous results downstream. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, quick question for you. Uh, Catherine's asking, would you consider overlaying uh, a full block element like uh, bronze or gold on your work? Have you ever tried, ever tried oh, no. any foil blocking? <laughs> you know what? No, I haven't done it yet, but... Talking about the Rysograph printers I use, they actually have some really interesting print techniques on their machine now, which is like, so they print like, kind of like a glue base. So yep. instead of printing like um, the actual color, they the machine runs, so this layer would go through and then it would be, the whole black bit on it would be glue sort of base. And it would sort of like buff after. Yep. And it, and the color would be like you can choose like gold and like silver and like like really metallic colors on it which is really interesting um and i definitely want to try that at some point 
yeah those things, special finishes yeah are amazing the only thing is is that you can so it used to be a company called all can i don't i don't think it exists anymore mm. they used to do a little book of print finishes i have one somewhere uh, called designers will not be prosecuted yeah. uh, and it has a whole range of print finishes the only thing is you suddenly want to use because they're so good <laughs> You, you yeah. find yourself being steered yeah. into wanting to use them once you're aware of them. You know, it's just, yeah, but, uh, definitely. Yeah, uh, uh, Sandrine is saying that she loses sleep uh, every time that somebody mentions um, bringing multi-channel files in. They are they are a little bit super technical. <laughs> um, Catherine's saying spot channels are good. Uh, Stuart's saying about print finishes, great for. Um, lovely things like spot UV varnishes and and uh, film. Uh, so uh, let's have a quick like this. So uh, really appreciating work. So Karim's saying saying wow uh, to your work here, um, Thanks, which is really Karim. nice. Um, let's have a quick look uh, further down. It's quite a lot of chat going on. We've got a lovely community here. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And quite a few of them stick around afterwards and go into the discord and they chat throughout the day um, as well. So that's kind of nice. So uh, Tim's popping the link for that into the chat. So you can join us on our discord where the uh, conversation can carry on, of course, uh, for later on. So flocking, that's a word I haven't heard for a long time. Did uh, you come across that process. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I actually, I was really fo- lucky when I was at my sixth form college. We mm-hmm. had all these like facilities in the art school, like in the sixth form art department. Yeah. And my tutor at the time, like he always got all these like different equipments in yeah. for like us to like try it out. And that's where I kind of learned how to like screen print and stuff as well. And I think flocking was one of the, is it when you, I'm pretty sure it's like when you, when the machine sort of like cuts out. Yeah, I like, think it. I think it involves, oh, do you know, I can't remember. It's a long, long time ago. And I only knew one person. I can remember her name. Her name was Helen Chambers, uh, yeah. who did flocking. But it involved a lot of lino cut, if I remember, Yeah. in doing that. So I think, again, I think it was an adhesive-based process. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, this, it, is what, this is a gap in my knowledge here. I'm going to have to do some homework <laughs> yeah. to bring it back. <laughs> the, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was an adhesive-based process. And I think the way hers was done was with lino, lino linoleum yeah. um which is crazy have you done any of that stuff have you done it have you done anything with like wood so given that you've uh looked at some other print processes have you tried things like woodcut and lino and yeah i've, I've tried uh tried a lot of print making techniques actually mm. um uh like I, we used to do like a lot of wood block and also yeah. like lino and yeah. then quite a bit of etching and we were really lucky to be at a university that had like an old sort of lithography studio yeah where you actually work into the like a stone and like there's a lot of like it's such a crazy process like i still don't, i've kind of completely forgotten how to use it but it is but the, the outcome from that technique is just amazing but it's also uh, sadly not in as much use i guess anymore yeah with like the new printing techniques and stuff like that i think some of these things are coming back though i think the whole maker economy uh thing is bringing back some of these older processes and it's a fusion of being able to work digitally and then be able to move uh things onto you know in in, into older processes because a lot of the labor came in making the um making all the different things and we've got we've got laser cutters now that can cut things we've got you know you years ago you wouldn't have thought of owning a cnc router yeah. uh, to actually do things but they're really affordable now mm. um if you wanted to start a business like that i mean not something you'd have hanging around as a hobby um yeah. but for just i think a couple of grand you can get uh which sounds like a lot of money to a lot <laughs> of people right but you know for a business investment a couple of grand perhaps isn't uh, no. quite so much but years ago, these things were tens of thousands of pounds. Yeah. And now you can get them for that that relatively relatively small yeah. uh, investment and start to mill things away so you can create wood blocks really, really quickly. Yeah. Uh, those kind of things. So I do think they are on the way back. Have you had, uh, Angus is asking, have you had any happy accidents with any of your prints? Have you had anything 
that's not gone to plan, but you've sort of gone with it anyway and thought, wow, I actually really like that. Uh, I'll show you a picture, actually. Um, awesome. Uh, where is it? So I'll just go on my website, actually. It's easier. So this print here, I did... Where is it? Yeah, this one here is like... There's like these white bits here, you can see. Yeah, yeah. But I, I thought it just looked uh, kind of like, sort of like clouds and like like bunch of stars or I don't know. But it was actually, this, this is a screen print by the way. And the one of the layers, like the background layer there, it didn't quite completely blow off all the, right. um, the emulsion on it. Yeah. And when I print, I didn't realize until I started printing it and then <laughs> I just sort of left it there because I thought it kind of added to the image a bit more. Yeah, it's got something. Yeah. It has. Yeah. It has. Oh, man, I'd love to buy a four-color uh, four color, um, uh, screen table. I really would. You oh, know, on, yeah. a dolly, on a dolly. But uh, I've got nowhere to put one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, it takes up a lot of space but it does yeah and it's yeah. super super messy yeah uh from doing that but again that's another process that now you can uh so whereas before cutting a screen a film screen so you had emulsion to either do that expose and wash away yeah uh, but you could also hand cut film screens and that's something you can do now with oh yeah with laser cutters and you can get super mm. accurate build a file yeah. in illustrator yeah. Send it through a laser cutter to cut the film and then bond the film. So, have you seen them? They're like iron on films that you can iron onto. A yeah, screen. yeah. Um, at the studio I screen print at, they some people use that sort of technique. It's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, that's no, great stuff. You could um, you could show us through some of the stuff here on your. I mean, unless you've got something else you're you're about to show us, but otherwise, I think it'd be nice to take a look through uh, some of this work if that's okay with you. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so these, as, as I told you at the start, I've kind of done a lot of music related stuff. Mm. I, I used to live with like a um, bunch of musicians when I was at uni and uh, they were all studying jazz at Trinity College of Music in Greenwich. And then, um, yeah, we just got along really well and went to a lot of like gigs and some of them were making like really good records. Like this is one of my friends is Mark Kavuma. He's like, an amazing trumpet player and yeah i've been working on his like album release for like last few years it's great oh cool yeah and um, i was just gonna say robert robert's asking how did you learn or or teach yourself composition was that part i mean it's i think it's part of just um drawing loads and also looking at like great artists who you know like have like great compositional skills. Um, people like, I don't know, it's just like Monet and like um, Van Gogh, yeah. Picasso, like just all the great artists, you sort of look at their work and then kind of, I guess take bits out from there. But you have got really strong compositional skills, really strong. Thanks. And uh, yeah, it's just, Oh, what's like, that conference one just above there? That, that's yeah. This is um, wow. This is quite different from what I generally do, I guess. But um, it still has the same sort of color scheme and like the line work, I guess. But this was an artwork that I worked on for. They're actually called the conference, and this like company that organizes like a big event in Malmo, Sweden. Uh, bringing together a lot of companies to work together and um, a lot of talks. It's like a mix of a lot of things in like a couple of days, like two days. And mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to create like the artwork and um, which sort of ended up getting used. Uh, oh, I haven't got it here. <laughs> ended up getting used as like into like 3D. Uh, oh, okay like yeah 3d objects and like loads of different things um i can see if i can show you here oh, this is annoying
Oh, it's not letting me do it. <laughs> not anyway, to worry. It's, I mean, yeah. people can check out your Instagram, and actually, Tim uh, is popping that into the chat as well, so we can uh, we can take a good look at uh, at, at your work there too, uh, as well later on. Mm. Um, I'm just going to answer a quick question for Gareth. This is stream 86, I think, today. Um, 86 streams, Garab, we've done. <laughs> Since wow. the start of lockdown, you know, Monday to Friday. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a lot of people on it. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's great. <clears throat> Pardon me, so sorry. Um uh, Carol <laughs> saying that a ukulele would be great in these illustrations. They would. I will make sure uh, to add some uh, some ukulele next time. If I if I just sit here for a minute, um Garab, if you wouldn't mind just <laughs> <laughs> Just drawing me while we <laughs> while we do that, fantastic. Yeah, I love the strong colours in your work, and I love that that y- your your uh, fondness for print and for screen uh, printing and, and and other print forms comes across really, really well, really strongly in your Thanks. work. And and, that, and your your scheme of picking colours from uh, from other projects that you've got, I think that works. You've got there's a unity, right? In in yeah, in a lot of your work. Yeah, definitely. I feel like when I look at some of the other older work and then pick colours from it, and I'll sometimes like delve into more like new palette and then mix it up. And I, you might even see like different changes of colours like as you go along because this is sort of all in chronological order of like right. since how I started when I started working. And yeah. Oh, you've done some boards as well. Yeah, this is a, a company based in uh, Bristol, UK, in uh, Skateboard Cafe. Yeah. And some of my friends' mates are like part of their skateboard team. So I kind of managed to meet up with them and then we talked about doing some boards. And then since then, we've done like quite a few now, actually. Uh, yeah, where where did you study? Just that, did I, I'm not sure if I did ask you that a moment uh, ago. I went to Camberwell College of Arts in London. Right. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's another one that I did for Mark. This is actually a painting. I also oh, okay. really enjoy painting, which I haven't done that often recently because most of the commercial projects that I work on or like prints that I do, I use a lot of like Photoshop on it. Yeah. But it's nice to stay connected to a medium, isn't it? What medium yeah. did you use for that? Was it uh, Gouache it's a, acrylic? Yeah, it's all Gouache on this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really fun to yeah. work. And yeah, just a lot of <laughs> music. <laughs> Oh, I love the one with the tiger yeah. back there. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah I really enjoy this one. This is a uh, Thelonious Monk, by the way. Yeah. The jazz pianist. And I just wanted to kind of add a little bit of interesting scene behind him, I guess. Like yeah. something different. And also, like, when I was doing this particular piece, I was looking at a lot of um, Japanese woodblock prints. Like the ukiyo-e... Uh, woodblock artist is like really amazing yeah no and it comes across it comes across really really clearly you can really see mm. yeah um uh, were your uh, pin badges easy to produce yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. i actually you i think you just have like a f- file like illustrator file mm. i'm pretty sure and then you just send it off yeah and the manufacturers just do all the rest of the work for you <laughs> no, it's- yeah, so you don't have to do much. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's fantastic. I'll just have a quick, because we've just got uh, about a minute or so left. So I'm just going to have a quick look um, for some questions here. I'll, I'll just fire these at you if that's all right. Stuart's saying, uh, what's your average turnaround time on a project? Could you could you put a number on that, do you think? I mean, it depends, really. If I'm working on like a newspaper job, I probably have to turn around in like a day or even right. half a day sometime. Right, and that's from like start to finish. So it, it it can be like very quick, and but it all depends on the client and how long they've got. So right. an average like 
I could easily turn it around in a day, like an image, simple image, like A size, A3, A4 size. Yeah. And if it's like a bigger picture, like this one, which is like a lot wider and bigger, this is actually a screen print, but um, yeah. Nice it triptych. Take, it would, <laughs> yeah, it would take a lot mm. longer to finish that. Yeah. Yeah, no, fantastic. Oh, and I see you've got some some cut out there on foam core board, some elements of that. Have you tried um have you tried Aero? Have you tried Adobe Aero? Have you had a look at No at that? I, so augmented reality? Oh right. Um, I've I've never really had a look at that yet. But um I wonder how you'd work uh, how you'd feel about it because you can take your layered files yeah. and set them out in a space, in an environment, a room or outdoors or whatever. And you can actually walk. You can change the Z index oh, on wow. the layers, and What's so you the... can uh, Adobe Aero. Um, so check that out. Try it. Yeah, and you can bring in your layered files, and then you can walk through yeah. your layers. That's, I guess, yeah. That sounds really. Yeah, good. that might be fun for you to do. You know, you yeah. Might maybe, uh, yeah, give that a go. Mm. Anyway, uh, for now though, we are at the top of the hour, so uh, our time together is pretty much up Gaurav it's been fantastic having you here thank thanks. you so much yeah thanks for having me oh it's been a pleasure and uh, everybody's loved seeing your work and your process so thank you uh, again for that um so everyone that's it we are at the end of the stream but ready to start our weekend uh, <laughs> if we know the difference between the weekend and the week anymore <laughs> no, it's, it's confusing we now have saturday flag in our house so we know it's the weekend <laughs> but uh, whatever you're doing i hope that you have a really lovely weekend enjoy the weather uh, while it's here with us in the uk of course uh, yeah. responsibly and safely so stay safe stay creative and we'll be back with you uh, next week until then take care bye bye